Hey everybody, JJ here. It is Bolt to the Bust. It is Monday, April 20th, and hope everyone is well. Here's what we got on tap for today. The economy will never be the same. That might sound kind of dark and depressing, but we're going to talk about what that means. Uh, the Fed propping up stocks, will it matter? Uh, even homeless people are hurting during this shutdown. We'll talk about how they are being hurt. And uh, rising prices, falling prices, who is right? Who is correct on this? Right? You hear people talking about hyperinflation, then you hear talk, uh, people talking about deflation, sometimes the same people. So who is right? What's going up? What's going down? Let's talk about it. Now right here on our first bullet point, the economy will never be the same. Now first of all, I just want to pause here. For those that were asking, no, I'm not sick. <laughs> no, I don't have a virus, the virus. Um, I have bad allergies and... If it's too annoying, let me know. I might sound pretty stuffed up, but I am one of those people that refuses to take allergy medications. Uh, my wife's always writing me, telling me to uh, take these pills. I just don't try. I try not to be dependent on pills, and we're going to talk about that here in this report. But if it's too annoying, if I sound too stuffed up, please let me know, and maybe I'll start taking pills just to make myself more listenable. But the economy will never be the same. Let's look at this article right here. Uh, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin predicts U.S. economy will rebound in months and not years. Quote, we are going to have a terrific, uh, terrific breakthroughs. Not just a breakthrough, but breakthroughs. Now, what is he talking about? What type of breakthrough? Is there going to be something new and magical that's going to happen? Well, you let me know what you think because some people have speculated that there's going to be an entirely new financial system and that there's going to be this uh, this magical transformation in the way the economy works and the financial system and the uh, and the currency. Now I find that a little too good to be true, so I'm not putting my hopes and dreams on some sort of magical transformation. I think he's just being optimistic, and I think he's just saying things, just like we've seen a lot of politicians say things that turned out to be a blatantly false. For example. The consumer is strong. The economy is the best it's ever been. Well, let's go back here. Let's go back uh, to just maybe a few weeks ago. And we found out that one out of three people could not pay their rent or their mortgage. How strong is the consumer? Right? The mask has come off. We know the consumer is not strong. Most people living paycheck to paycheck in this country, we've known it here. If you've been on this channel, it's no surprise. As soon as all these shutdowns occurred, you knew, you knew, based on what we've been talking about here for a couple years, the consumer was not strong. Most people living paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, and the evidence was clear just in the past few weeks. People out of work for only a week or two, all of a sudden were not able to meet their monthly payment obligations. One in three people couldn't pay their rent or their mortgage. And that number is going to get worse as time goes on unless they end of the lockdowns and people start going back to work but guess what it may not matter because a lot of businesses are not going to survive this shutdown and that's why I say in this first bullet point no the economy will never be the same now it doesn't mean that something may change in the future and maybe some parts of the economy will change will get better but the economy is never gonna go back to the way it was so if there's a magical transformation out there or as Mnuchin says, there's going to be some breakthroughs, right? Maybe he's talking about a, uh, a cure for this uh, sickness. But no, the economy will never be the same. And I'll give you two points on this. One, the consumer, I believe that most people have been emotionally scarred from this. And I don't think people are going to go back to spending like they used to. That means things that people used to spend money on that are not necessities like entertainment, uh, let's say season passes to SeaWorld. I say that because I'm here in San Diego. Uh, season passes to Disneyland, trips, vacations, things that are not vital or necessary. I believe a lot of at least smart people are going to start cutting those things out. Now, hopefully people will be smart enough to start cutting out this foolish spending, right? Trips, vacations, right? I'm guessing there's a lot of people that took vacations here in the past couple years that now are calling their mortgage company or begging their landlord for forgiveness and you know hopefully this will be a wake-up call to a lot of people right an example of a job or business that will may not ever return CNBC article right here 24-hour fitness weighs bankruptcy 
And a lot of the gyms are being declared as non-essential, which I think is uh, not true. I think working out and exercise should be one of the essential things. It's funny that liquor stores are still open because they sell candy bars and have a few food items, but yet fitness and working out and uh, health is not essential. It's just amazing how when you leave these decisions in hands of politicians, how things get very, very misconstrued. But yet people are asking for more and more government intervention. They want politicians to control more aspects of our life. People want to be dependent on the government. They want the government to come in and pay for everything. They don't want any free market. They don't want any capitalism. But moreover on this article right here, 24-Hour Fitness is uh, declaring or looking to declare bankruptcy. And they're right now they're kind of weighing things out here. But even 24-Hour Fitness doesn't know how long this lockdown is going to ask, so there's no definite. But imagine all the people that work at these gyms, all these jobs, and they have many, many locations here in California. But they have been undercut by several other gyms here in California anyway that are much cheaper. I believe 24-Hour Fitness is like $30 or $40 a month. Um, but there's many other gyms that popped up in my area here in Southern California that are much cheaper. We have Crunch Fitness, it's $10 a month. Uh, we have this place called Choose Fitness, $10 a month, I believe. A Planet Fitness, uh, much cheaper. And some of these gyms don't try to get you into a contract. They make you sign up for a year gym membership. And then if you lose your job or have to stop going, uh, they still got you and they'll get your, they'll zap your credit if you stop paying. So it's a contract. So I wasn't a big fan of 24-Hour Fitness and I believe their business model was failing here even before this. Uh, but this downturn is uh, really exposing a lot of businesses that were not run in an efficient manner. So hopefully some of the lower price gyms will stay operational and will survive, will survive this downturn. All right, so that's just one quick example of how the economy will never be the same. One, people are not going to spend like they used to. I think people are going to be scarred from this. And two, many, many businesses are not going to survive this. And I think we're going to see unemployment permanently higher than what we've been seeing here in the past couple decades. Next, the Fed is propping up stocks. Will it matter? Now, I remember when I first started talking about that on this channel, I had many, many skeptics. People saying, no, JJ, they can't buy stocks. There's regulations against that. The Fed can't do that. That wouldn't be, that wouldn't be fair. Well, who said anything had to be fair? All right, is it fair that too big to fail banks got bailouts when millions of people lost their homes? Is that fair? Well, some would say not. Uh, but it happened, right? Just because something's not fair or doesn't seem like it's uh, the right thing doesn't mean it's not happening. And, and again, I had a lot of skeptics, people, you know, so-called calling me out uh, that, no, the Fed can't do that. Well, now it's, it's admitted that it all came out in the open. Now, we've known that for a long time. If you've been on this channel, you know about the plunge protection team. You know about the Fed trading desk. Those things are real. They're not just some sort of crazy theories. All right, we've shown you the documents. We went to the official web of the official Fed web pages that talked about all these uh, programs and these operations. Uh, but now it's mainstream news that the Fed is doing this. Uh, why are stocks soaring as the economy melts? Down, thanks to the Fed. And if they're not buying stocks directly, they're doing it through who? The primary dealers. They pump money into these institutions who then turn around and buy stocks into trading houses and hedge funds. And it's pretty simple if you think about it. The Fed wants to keep stocks propped up. Of course, the president wants that. Uh, why? Because you have the wealth effect. You have people in their 401k. I believe one in three workers has a retirement account tied to stocks, 401k. Right? You also have pensions that are heavily, heavily dependent on the stock market rising. So pensions, a lot of these pensions are going to default, but this is holding off the day of reckoning for a lot of pensions. Um, they've allowed corporations to buy back their own stocks. Also, over the past decade, that's another push, uh, something else that pushed stocks higher. And, of course, that was a big bragging point for the current administration. Hey, look at the stock market. Uh, look at your 401k. Isn't this great? Uh, greatest economy ever. And that gave confidence, also something that gave confidence to the consumer and had people spending instead of saving because they were so confident this is the best economy ever, right? Wrong. This is a wake-up call. 
and keeping the stock market propped up is not going to save most of working class people. It's going to be a lot of pain, and I think we need to uh, prepare for a prolonged downturn. Steve Mnuchin may not tell you to prepare, but if you're looking at things like we look at, if you're looking at the big picture, if you're using common sense, that's all you need to do to know that we need to prepare for a prolonged economic downturn. Could be a depression. It could exceed the Great Depression. It depends on what happens uh, with inflation and these rescue operations and the bailouts, and we'll talk about that more. Um, but first, even homeless people are hurting due to the shutdown. What do we mean by that? Well, we talked about in previous reports, and you probably have seen other news articles, homeless shelters are be becoming infection houses, basically. Uh, there was a story we did in Las Vegas where they took all the homeless people, put them out on the, in a parking lot. They had six-foot squares painted on the ground, and they put up tents for these people because of the outbreak. They had to get them out of the building. So that's one way homeless people are being hurt. But how do homeless people get any money? Uh, what do they find and collect uh, to try to get themselves a little bit of money, maybe to buy probably booze, but uh, hopefully buy some food and other necessities while they collect cans and bottles and they go to recycle. But guess what? A lot of the recycling centers are closed down. Actually, most of them in my area are closed down. And you have most of these people, I'm sure you probably, if you've lived in any sort of big city, you've seen uh, someone like this collecting bottles. Now these people don't even have the 10 cents or whatever they get from their bottles to go cash in because the recycling centers are closed down. So again, an example of, uh, it raises the question, is this shutdown worse than the actual sickness? Right? Is the cure worse than the sickness? Many people are being hurt. Um, to try to put a positive spin on it, yes, I hope it is waking a lot of people up, and I hope people will not continue to spend foolishly uh, once we come out of this. We'll eventually come out of this. I'm not trying to say that this is the end of the um, human race as we know it, but as far as the economy goes and spending uh, psychologically, I don't think people are ever going to go back to spending the way they were. And I think the types of jobs that are going to be available in the future are going to be a lot different. Hopefully we'll see a lot less jobs in the entertainment industry and uh, more jobs geared towards what really matters. Food, production, manufacturing. And we'll have to see how it goes, but that is the way I see it unfolding. Uh, finally, rising prices, falling prices, who is right? Well, you've seen a lot of YouTubers, I'm sure, and some of them have been saying for years, there's going to be hyperinflation, they're printing up too much money, gold is going to 10000 gold's going to $20,000, uh, crypto's going to 100000 I'm sure you've seen those, those uh, reports and those uh, speculative, uh, speculative uh, forecasts and prices. Well, we haven't seen that. Um, have they stopped printing money? You know, why is there deflation? Why are oil prices falling? Oil prices in the $18 range as of today. This is because of supply and demand. Let me explain that. So even though they're printing dollars like there's no tomorrow, and a lot of people are pointing at that saying, well, this is destroying the dollar. Prices are going to rise. We're going to see hyperinflation. Not necessarily. right? Supply and demand is still a big factor. And, of course, supply is exceeding demand because hardly anyone's driving right now. So that leads to falling prices. The same thing in the housing market. If the banks pull back on the lending, that's going to cause demand to drop, and also it's going to cause prices to drop. So we're going to see deflation, and some people say, no, it's going to be hyperinflation. Well, maybe, maybe someday, and maybe sometime in the near future, but not right now. Banks are pulling back on lending. Home prices are going to drop. Uh, consumers are pulling back on driving and the need for gas has declined. Gas prices, oil prices are going to drop. Right? Less manufacturing, less companies in operation, less people driving. Demand drops. It's pretty simple. Supply and demand, right? So anyone painting a broad brush saying there's going to be hyperinflation, there's going to be deflation, well, there may be rising prices at, in some areas, and there may be falling prices in some areas. It depends on the particular supply and demand for that item or for that product. An example, over the past 10 years, the Fed printed a lot of money. They ran up their balance sheet since the financial crisis. So it started at about $800 billion, went up to $4 trillion, And now, as of the most recent report here out of the Fed, $6.3 trillion. 
dollars. You would think that would be an inflationary uh, event, the Fed taking on so much debt on their balance sheet, but no. There are areas that saw falling prices. Look at electronics. They were manufactured so cheaply uh, and imported here from countries that have essentially slave labor that the cost of certain electronics has dropped over the past 10 or 15 years. Look at big screen TVs. Uh, look at many other consumer electronic items have dropped because they're manufactured so cheaply. Right, So it's not always a broad, a broad brush. I do say don't have your eggs, all of your eggs in one basket. Try to prepare for hyperinflation, but don't go 100%. Don't go all in. Uh, try to get some gold and silver. Try to have assets that will go up in value if there is hyperinflation overall. And that's how you can prepare, uh, diversify. Also have cash in case you uh, see deflation. Imagine everyone, imagine someone having everything in gold and silver, and then all of a sudden home prices drop by half or 70%, and those same people don't have enough cash to go out and take advantage of such a great buying opportunity in, in lower price real estate. Right? So have cash, have cash to take advantage of falling prices, which may be ahead for certain commodities, for certain assets, including land and real estate. Look at what the billionaires are doing. The billionaires, a lot of them are going to mostly cash. Look at Buffett. Uh, we've talked about that here many times. Um, when you have cash in times of carnage, when there's blood on the streets, you will benefit from this. Um, so there's going to be people that are prepared, and there's going to be people that are going to be wiped out with this transformation that we're going into. It's going to be a different type of economy going forward. I'm just going to wrap this up here for now. Hope everybody's well. Thank you for watching this. Appreciate everyone, all your support, uh, all the new Patreons. Thank you very much for your support. Um, we're going to be putting out a video uh, exclusively for Patreons here very soon. So thank you again, and hope everyone is well. Bye for now. Right, I am very happy to say that we are sponsored by Boxable Homes. These are high-quality, movable, low-cost homes. They are factory-built, made right here in the USA in northern Las Vegas. These units will include full-size appliances, including full-size refrigerator and washer and dryer, and prices fully loaded start at only $49,500. These homes even caught the eye of HUD Secretary Ben Carson as homelessness continues to increase and affordable housing is becoming more and more of a problem. They can be shipped internationally, including anywhere in the USA. These homes are going to be a game changer for affordable housing. Please check the link below in description and take a look at these amazing homes for yourself.